Working with top international museums and galleries, Exhibition on Screen aims to offer a cinematic immersion into the best-loved art. In its fifth series, it's delivered to over 50 countries, with Gibraltar now subscribing to the concept. Well, I've made a lot of art films for television, but it's a real thrill to make them for the cinema because the cinema is the best place to see a film like this. You've never seen art on a big screen in, in this way. The technology is so fantastic these days. But what I, what I love and what cinema is all about is storytelling. So we pick the biggest exhibitions in the world and we make films about the exhibition, but almost more about the artist and the biography of that artist. And they're, they're wonderful to watch in the cinema. I love it. You talk about the quality of film and the storytelling value, but what process do you undertake? What's the starting point for these documentaries? The starting point is the exhibition. So what is the intention of the exhibition? Many of these exhibitions take five, 10, sometimes even 15 years to, to put on. They're huge tasks for galleries. So if you miss them, it's great that you have the film to, to see the exhibition. Plus, in a sense, what we're doing is we're taking you around the exhibition with the curator, with the historian. We take you to the actual places that the artist was born, worked, died, and so on and so forth. And then I, or the other director that work on these films, we go to the locations and we try to talk to the world's experts. We read the correspondence. We look at the paintings. We go to other galleries. And we think about the storytelling. What is the best way to tell this story to our audience? Once people see what it's all about, it's not just an exhibition of, of paintings, but everything else that goes with it, as, as Phil has mentioned. I think that it will go down well. I'm hoping that people would take advantage of this in the same way as they have done with the Royal Opera, for example. Phil Grabsky is no stranger to Gibraltar, having jointly produced the documentary Rock of Ages with GBC in the 80s. He believes audiences here will appreciate Canaletto, as there are some specific links to Gibraltar, one of these relating to the grand tours by tourists. Some went overland, some went by sea, and they would actually stop in Gibraltar on the way. The other reason we thought Canaletto might be of particular appeal to Gibraltar is because, of course, Gibraltarians have a great affection for the monarchy and the royal family, and it was a thrill for me with Canaletto to actually go inside Buckingham Palace for the first time, go inside Windsor Castle, get into there. I mean, you're, where the picture gallery is, is next to the throne room. You know, it's next to the reception room, next to the music room. And pride of place in the, the Queen's picture gallery are these four Canalettos that hang above these four fireplaces. Cinema goers will embark on their own grand tour. But what did those at the launch think of the offering? I feel it works. And I, I, I would urge anybody that really interested in art in general to, to come to the cinema. Because one thing that uh, Bill Grabsky said was that because it's a documentary and it's in the cinema, they can afford to give you more time to ponder on an image. It's been a real joy as well to get with the camera work, to get really close, to get into the almost the, under the skin of Canaletta. We want to expand um, this even further. Uh, liaising with the educational establishments and trying to bring many, many students involved in the history of art, whether it's at GCSE or A-level standard, bringing um, students to the, to the cinema and of course uh, opening it up to as many people in the community as, as possible. The latest series will also feature living artist David Hockney as well as Suzanne, Van Gogh and Monet. Canaletto and the Art of Venice is on this Thursday at the Leisure Cinemas at 6.30pm. More details on leisurecinemas.com.